Guys, it's official. We are now officially in the longest economic expansion in U.S. history. I know. I guess Trump was right. The economy is doing amazeballs. If you want to know more about what this really means and how much longer this expansion is going to last, stay tuned for more. Lambeau! I told you, brother. Bro, we, this is the best economy that the world has ever fucking seen, man. I don't know what the hell you're always talking about. You know, the dollar's dying, the economy's tanking, you know, all this shit. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, bro. You're just, you're just a fucking hater, man. That's all you are. Hey, guys. How's it going? And welcome back to my show. <laughs> Today, we're going to be talking about, yeah, you guessed it, the economy. No, not coffee. The economy. Now, what are we going to be talking about exactly? Well, I just read the other day, um, most specifically on Zero Hedge, that we have now officially entered the largest expansion in uh, U.S. economic history. The last one before that was from 1991 all the way to 2001. Remember the Clinton years? So, now we have officially broken that record and now this that we're witnessing right now is the longest economic expansion ever. Now, right off the bat, I'm gonna answer a question that I'm sure is right on, in the tip of your tongues or in the top of your heads or wherever the fuck it is you keep thoughts. I keep my thoughts, uh, my thoughts, my, anyways. <laughs> I'm about to say a joke there about my, my thoughts. I keep them in the stable with the horse. Again, enough. My jokes are horrible. I'll be here all week, though. I got two shows on Friday, two on Saturday, and one on Sunday for a matinee. All right. Uh, what we're going to be talking about today is uh, this expansion. You know, first of all, how long, the, the one question I want to answer, because I'm sure it's on the tip of your tongues, is how long is this going to last? Honestly, I don't know. None of us know. But if uh, any of the other indicators that I and others talk about all the freaking time are leading us in the right direction. Um, I honestly don't think that this expansion is ending anytime soon. I think this expansion is gonna be around for a long time. In fact, this might be the last expansion ever of the US economy. Now, I'm just talking about the dollar right now, okay? So the last expansion with this dollar. So, sure, a lot of us are, you know, calling for a crash in 2019. A lot of us, a lot of us are calling for a crash a little later than that. I, I've already told you guys, I really think it's going to last a little longer. I, I really don't think that we're going to see a crash up until either A, Trump gets, after he gets elected again, or B, right before he leaves office, okay? That's, that's when I think that we're going to finally see the crash of all crashes with the dollar and the world economy. Up until then, we're going to just keep seeing inflation, inflation, inflation. So get used to it. So every time that you're seeing uh, right now these uh, massive price jumps in uh, Bitcoin or other cryptos or seeing massive price jumps in things like gold and silver and other things like that, this is all part of what's going on right now. Remember what I've, I've talked to you guys about over and over and over again. The dollar and this economy has to die. It's not dead yet. It's not gonna die like that. It takes a while. It's been a while. I know most of you guys out there is like, oh, when the hell is this gonna happen? It's already overdue, long overdue. You're right. But again, you know, just when you think things are gonna be a certain way, they surprise you and they continue and continue and continue. For a lot of you guys out there, you guys have been waiting for this economic crash for, fuck, a lot longer than a decade, I'll tell you that and it's still not here. So what makes you think that it's gonna happen in the next couple months? It's not, it's not. As much as we want it to happen, it's not. Again, we're gonna be seeing a correction, a major correction at the end of this year. But that's basically it. It can't get any further than that. And again, we're watching every single indicator right now saying that yeah, we're gonna see a crash, we're gonna see some sort of uh, hiccup but it's not gonna be a hiccup. We've already had several hiccups in the last 10 years, and because of the money printing, because of uh, 
how the Fed, how these international central banks are you know, working the system right now, it's not gonna happen. They're gonna be able to print into oblivion, therefore printing this whole system you know, above water. It's just the way it is. I mean, look, right now, we're supposed to be um, you know, going into um, a point in which the debt is so great that it needs to be canceled, AKA bankruptcy. But it's not happening, it's not gonna happen. In fact, what is actually happening is the complete opposite. That instead of the people, the corp, you know, um, companies, businesses, and so on and so forth, but basically the people. Instead of them getting bailed out, we already know who is actually getting bailed out. It's the actual banks, the people that are issuing the debt, the people that are printing the money, the people that are in the highest of high power. They are the only ones that are getting bailed out. And it's not gonna be until they get bailed out again and we the people are starving and have no other choice but to push back, start a revolution and get the power back from them, that we're not gonna see any change. We're just not gonna see any change. Because again, why are the people in power gonna change anything that they're doing if no one is doing anything about it. Even when we do, even when the people do rise up and do things about it, again, the, 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 the people in power are so powerful that they literally extinguish everything at, you know, at any turn, you know, meaning that, you know, we look at what's happening in France. I don't even know how many weeks they've uh, been protesting there, but it's almost a year. Like, I don't know, six, seven, eight months of protesting every weekend, every week, for again, six, seven months in Paris and France, and you don't hear nothing about it. You know, you hear constant, you know, fake news of what's happening all around the world, whether it's things with Venezuela, Cuba, Argentina, so on and so forth. When you're looking at what's happening in Europe, you know, no one's talking about anything that's happening in Europe. But again, and I've, I've said this before many, many times, the Euro, the actual Euro note in the Euro, has to fall before the US dollar, you know? So we, we still got ways to go. I, I wouldn't be surprised if the Euro falls soon, but before the dollar falls, the Euro needs to fall. So there you go. It's like even longer than we were expecting. It's not gonna, we're not gonna have a total, you know, like a total fall of the Euro, of the dollar, of the whole economic system. Of the, no, it's just not gonna happen. Okay, it's just not gonna happen. The people in power are the banks. And you know, even though we are slowly chipping away and taking that power back, it's gonna be a while from now. This weekend, um, literally, as uh, I was just hanging out with my girlfriend, uh, she was just like doing some little watercolor, watercolor paintings and you know, doing her little thing there. Um, I was just like, eh, you know me, I, I can't help myself. So I was like, eh, fuck it, let me, uh, let me listen to what's going on you know, out there. And um, I subscribe to the BIS channel, the Bank of International Settlements channel, their YouTube channel. I don't know how many subscribers they have, but you know, because they don't put there. But long story short, you know, I was watching at a series of videos that they put on Sunday. And uh, you know, all of these videos were like 45 views, 60 views, uh, just a couple views. And it's literally, you know, all these central banker guys that I'm always talking about, literally, you know, talking about the future of the world, the future of the dollar, the future of crypto, the future of all of these fucking things. And again, guys, as much as we want crypto and Bitcoin, you know, um, and all these things to be, you know, all, all uh, you know, if, uh, even though we want all these things to be our economy, our currency, our value system, they don't want that. And they're the ones that are in power and we need to switch everything over. It would make it a lot easier if a lot of these corporations and a lot of these other entities out there that, you know, um, move our money, use our money that, you know what I mean, take our money, they would, you know, start going down, you know, start taking the steps in order to start um, taking um, crypto, cryptocurrencies and moving us in that direction, but they don't do that because again, we already know who's in power and they don't want these ecosystems to flourish or even be there. You know, um, I, we all gotta like, again, you know, focus on what's going on right now, but you know, it's just, you know, kind of like uh, to put a fork in this situation for a minute, in, in this conversation for a minute, but you know, again, you know, let's just go back to like Jack Dorsey of Twitter 
He is public enemy number one because all the censorship that's happening on his platform. But again, guys, we got to remember that he has no say in what's really going on in his company. Just like Steve Jobs didn't have say in Apple. And a lot of you know figureheads or even owners of corporations of you know these master you know these ginormous corporations have zero power other people have the power over them and a lot of them are rudely awakened at the last minute you know what i mean you know whether it happened to you know when it happened to steve jobs many 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 years ago um and and that's just happening to uh, mr dorsey as it's happening to zuckerberg as it's happening to a lot of people sure there a lot of them are trying to push back like again jack dorsey but for example he leaves twitter alone but what does he do? He develops the Cash App, and every single day he is, you know, um, uh, banking the unbanked, giving people on the street the ability to use and have Bitcoin, to buy Bitcoin, to have a Bitcoin wallet, to send Bitcoin, to use Bitcoin, and in, in, in its a whole ecosystem. Because the other day he just literally added um, a Bitcoin wallet to the Cash App, so now the whole ecosystem is complete, which is awesome. Because as soon as I heard that news, I'm like, oh, finally. I'm gonna be able to have my aunt or even other family members of mine that are extremely old and have no idea, they, they can barely work their Wells Fargo app or whatever the fuck bank they use. But now, you know, they'll be able to finally not only purchase Bitcoin, but accrue Bitcoin, use Bitcoin, set them up with another wallet and so on and so forth. So we're, we're slowly getting there, okay? And we gotta remember every time that we see why, why I'm so adamant about KYC, Again, last week, back at the Bitcoin conference, Edward Snowden was speaking, and uh, man, it was great. It was great to see Edward Snowden. It was great to see him talking about Bitcoin and crypto, and, and, and just literally um, putting out there that the one problem that, the only problem that Bitcoin really has is privacy. That's basically the one problem that Bitcoin has, but even with its privacy issues, meaning that you know your transactions are not necessarily as private as you we all thought, because Bitcoin transactions are not private, they kind of still are private. Because he kind of went through the, the whole techno mumbo jumbo as to how they are private. Now, in the end, you know, from extreme privacy, we need other coins that are specifically meant for that. And why do we need the privacy? Again, because as of right now, just like Edward Snowden was saying, it was saying there's every single thing that we do is in their system. You know, how many times we enter and leave the country, how many transactions we make at Baskin Robbins or Starbucks, how many, you know, trips that we make, you know, what, you know, what our schedule is, you know, if we all, any one of us that has a, a phone, uh, you know, like literally the system, the banking system, the governmental system, they know everything about us. Every single thing about us. They know when we leave for work, when we leave work to go home, wh what stores we go to, what places we, we, we frequent, what everything. No matter what, nothing is a secret anymore. No matter what. Even if you don't have a Facebook account, Facebook has an account for you. And so that's the thing. You know, as we're moving into this future, we're losing privacy. We don't have any. In fact, we, we already lost privacy. We don't have privacy. We don't have the power okay of of the privacy okay and again the people say is like well if you got nothing to hide then you know you shouldn't be worried about it but that's that's not the point of all this you know the point is that it's just private privacy you know what i mean like it doesn't you know you're probably not doing anything you're you're, you're not doing anything wrong in your house but you don't want to have your house open so that all your neighbors can see exactly what you're doing right you're not doing anything wrong but yet why do you want privacy? Well, you know why you want privacy. And so that's the thing right now. You know, I know the whole, ex it, the, the, you know, where we're talking about privacy right now has maybe nothing to do with his economic expansion, but it actually does. It has a lot to do with his economic expansion because, again, guys, right now, for them, the system itself to continue growing and growing and growing, well, they need to accrue more power. How do they continue accruing power? By, again, you know, taking our privacy away taking the value of uh, everything outside of the dollar away, constantly you know, um, imprisoning us in this system that they have created for us. And um, you, you know, again, by them limiting our options, it limits us in, in how we can combat this. And, and so that, you know, it's, 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 it's a very complicated thing, but you know, long story short, what I really wanted to say with this episode more than anything else is the fact that 
as this economic expansion becomes finally the longest in US in world history, whatever, I don't know about world history, but at least US history, um, it is not the, the, the last one. You know what I mean? I mean, I mean, it's not gonna be ending anytime soon. In fact, if you look at the charts, it's gonna, I think it's gonna last for a lot longer than we originally thought. I think so. I think, we, again, we have many years of this to go because this is the death of the dollar right now. And so this economic expansion that we're in right now is gonna be the last economic expansion for this current dollar. You know, now, you know, once a dollar falls and the whole economic system, you know, goes kaput and we finally go back to a gold standard and all this other stuff, once we go, once that happens, you know, we will, the United States is still going to be around. They're going to be issuing a brand new dollar for its people and only its people and so on and so forth. And again, this is a story and a topic for another day, but that's what's going to happen. That's the history of all of these cycles, you know, so on and so forth. So... Who knows if this is the largest expansion ever in, in U.S. history, but I can guarantee you that this is going to be the longest, ex the longest expansion for this current U.S. dollar system right now. The next time that we crash is going to be the last time that we crash. And I know that a lot of us can agree on that. But again, if we crash anytime, you know, soon, it it's probably will be the end of the whole system. But it's not going to happen. They don't want it to happen. They have all these tools in place. You know, whether you see all these trade, uh, you know, what is it, trade wars with China and other parts of the world, again, China is heavily invested in the dollar. China is heavily invested in the West. Um, China doesn't want the dollar to crash. They understand what's at stake here. And um, I'm telling you guys, you know, when we when I talk about 100, one, um, when I talk about 100k Bitcoin, when I, when others talk about one million dollar Bitcoin and so on and so forth, this is what we're talking about. Because as this expansion keeps growing and growing and growing, well, again, you know, so will everything else. Meaning that every single commodity, every single thing, whether it's a cup of coffee, a refrigerator, a plastic Lambo, a painting, everything is going to keep getting more expensive and more expensive and more expensive. That's why you see um, all the time now, you see people like uh, Bernie Sanders, you know, pushing for democratic socialism. It's like, don't worry about it. We know you guys can't afford it, but we are printing money into oblivion so we can afford it for you. When you see, you know, others out there like Mr. Wang or Yang or whatever the fuck his name is, and he's pushing universal basic income. There's others pushing that. But, you know, him specifically is pushing universal basic income. And to a lot of people, it's like, oh, yeah, that's great. That's wonderful. We need that. It's like, no, we don't. The reason we need that and we need a $15, $20 minimum wage and, and, and all these other things is because... Uh, the inflation is getting so bad and it's just it's getting worse than our wages you know it's again inflation is growing faster than our wages are growing that the US government needs to invent something they need to come up with something in order to helicopter drop money on the population so that the population has enough money so they can you know continue doing business as usual meaning I don't know go to the doctor I don't know buy some fucking groceries and so pay rent so on and so forth but the economy is supposed to be to the point where, you know, we the people make more than enough money so that we can afford all of these things and still have money for savings and still have money for so many other things. You know, to again, you know, buy stuff so that we can keep the economy going. But the economy is so shitty right now that most people need two jobs. And in, in reality, most households are like two parents, each having two jobs, that's four jobs total. Hold on, four, yeah, I'm seeing double here, right? Four jobs total. Okay, just to make ends meet and still as each day goes on that's getting worse and worse So that means that even though you might have three to four incomes coming into a household It's still not enough for bills. So you need universal basic income. You need um, health care You need all of these other freaking things again government handouts just to make ends meet Because again the rate of inflation is getting out of hand and it's only gonna get worse and worse and worse because as of right now, they're bailing out the banks. Right now, they're bailing out the banks. Right now, they're bailing out the corporations. Right now, they're bailing out the farmers. They're bailing everybody out. Everyone except you, the fucking taxpayer. All right? And how are they going to bail you out? Again, you know, with universal basic income or start, you know, giving you stuff like uh, vouchers or start giving you free health care, free whatever. But again, just like every other governmental uh, system, 
It's shit. And if you don't believe me, just go to the fucking DMV. In fact, go to any government building, government entity, and just try to get anything done. And, you know, that's literally what government healthcare, government anything is going to be like. Straight up. Okay? The only reason I have such success out here, I've had success here with, uh, you know, the medical anything, is because I always go to private. I can afford private because I got dollars. But most people that can't afford a private doctor or hospital, they gotta go to the fucking public hospital that's free and there's no bueno. But anyways, guys, I feel like I'm just going off on a rant here, talking about many, many, many things. But at the end of the day, what I really do think, which is something that I've, I've, I've told you guys over and over again, this is not financial advice, but I would highly suggest that you do more research and homework on this because Again, if I were you guys, I would just be buying more gold, more silver, you know, take out loans in these, you know, bullshit um, um, economic uh, times right now and uh, buy property, buy whatever it is you got to buy, you know, um, buy big, because again, by the way, you can, you know, you can take out these fucking loans, go bankrupt and not have to pay it back. It's all part of the system. So assuming you want bad credit, but again, you know, just saying, if you're sitting on 100K in Bitcoin or gold or whatever the fuck, you know, I don't think your credit's gonna matter, especially if, anyways, not financial advice, you figure it out on your own. But anyway, the point is, it's like right now is the time to stack, okay? For any one of you old farts out there that have been stacking gold and silver, you already know what I'm talking about. For those of you that are only into crypto, you know, you guys are calling hotly. You know, you guys call it, you know, um, uh, whatever the fuck, but at the end of the day, you're stacking coins, you're stacking, you're stacking, and what are you doing? You're just stacking and stacking and stacking and stacking until that day comes when the whole fucking economy falls and you're gonna be sitting pretty. Just like it happened in uh, 1929, you know, many, many, many people back then, you know, where they had their gold and their silver, and when the whole economy, uh, when the whole economy crashed, you know, they were able to buy a brand new car for one silver coin, or buy, oh my God, shut the f Sorry guys, I was just giving the dog some, uh, Medicine. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, I was not pulling a McGaffey. But the point I'm gonna make right now, just to end this whole fucking thing, is that hyperinflation is, is, is it hasn't even started yet. Inflation is only beginning right now. Um, when when I saw the whole economic expansion thing literally hit, you know, um, the record, all I and then I saw the actual graph and I see all the other stats that come with it. I'm like, you know what? We haven't even started yet. This thing has not even started yet. We still have a while to go. And that's why, I, like I was just saying before, I got really interrupted by the fucking dog. By the way, I love dogs. I fucking love them. I just hate little fucking pieces of shit that don't fucking do anything but bark all day. Anyways, sorry. Sorry for anyone out there that might have one of those fucking hot dogs. But anyways, the point I'm making is that, you know, this is only getting started. When we're looking at Bitcoin at the price it's at, when we're looking at all these other assets at the price that they're at, you know, whether it's gold or silver, silver is the most undervalued asset in the planet, period, end of story, that's it. Um, when we're looking at gold, it's extremely undervalued. When we're looking at Bitcoin and other, you know, assets of that nature, also extremely undervalued. I, again, I, I really do think that, you know, Bitcoin, um, you know, obviously, you know, if it's already pretty, if it's valued pretty fairly, but it's not even anywhere close to the real value of what this is supposed to be at. So, when people ask me, you know, is it too late to get into this? Is it too late to buy Bitcoin? I say no. Even if you bought Bitcoin last week at 14K and um, it dropped all the way to 10K, it's still not too late. This, this, shit, this shit happens all the time. It's called Investing 101. Get used to it. You know, put on your big boy pants and stop crying. If you're buying this, for the future. If you're putting this as an investment, if you're literally, you know, um, buying this, just like if you would buy gold or silver, it should not fucking matter what you bought it at. And in fact, the only thing you should be mad at is that, yeah, sure, you bought it at 14, but you really wanted to buy it at 10, so you're gonna have bought more. But when the 10 comes around, buy more. Why? Because the, the things like Bitcoin are gonna be around forever, all right? And um, when I say forever, you know, I don't really mean like, you know, for the, end the fucking time. I'm really just, I mean that this cryptocurrency stuff and everything that we're moving into right now is gonna be around for a very long time. And if you're buying Bitcoin right now, you're just hedging against the dollar. Literally, that's all you're doing. Once the whole fucking system crashes and we're trying to figure out what the fuck we're gonna do and blah, 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 you know, at that point, <clears throat> you know, you're probably trading your Bitcoin for, you know, an island, you know, houses, cars, 
gold and silver. You know, things that are actual value or the new currency. Who knows what that new currency is going to be? We all know that it's probably not going to be something that's going to be issued by a bank or a government. But we are going to, be, you know, obviously we're going to be needing these things. So this is, again, you know, buying Bitcoin is like buying gold or buying silver. That's it. If you have no idea the importance of gold and silver when it comes to the bigger picture of all this, again, I implore you, I've said this over and over and over again, do your homework on the history of money. Do your fucking homework on the history of money. All the way at the bottom of this video, at the very, very bottom, is Mike Maloney's channel. He has done a series called The History, The Hidden Secrets of Money. It's an eight-part episode that goes all the way from the fucking beginning of time all the way to like a couple days ago with the Trump administration and everything that's that's uh, happened all the way through the again through the beginning of time when it comes to this shit through money, currency way back before the Greeks and the Romans and all the way through through to now in the future. And it's all about education, education, education. If you know the freaking history, then you have a better idea of where we're going. You can be uh, more patient. You can be more anything. Again, even if no matter what you're buying fucking Bitcoin on, if you're buying this for the long run, like just like if you're buying gold and silver, it doesn't matter. You already know we're going to blow past 20K. You already know we're going to blow past 100K. You already know we're going to get to a million dollar Bitcoin and, and beyond. And by the time we get to a million dollar Bitcoin, we're going to be in massive hyperinflation. Yeah, that's for sure. That's 1000% sure. One, you can guarantee that. But you're going to be sitting pretty. Because even though a hot dog or a piece of uh, or a cup of coffee is going to cost you one million dollars for a cup of coffee, well, it doesn't matter because you're going to be sitting on millions and millions and millions of dollars worth in Bitcoin. Imagine when one U.S. dollar equals one Satoshi. We're not that far away from that, guys. All right, just keeping everything into perspective, okay? I'm telling you. Educate yourselves on, on the subject of money, of currency, the dollar, other currencies that have been in, 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 in our human history, gold, silver, and all these other things. Because once you do, then you really, really understand, you know, what's going on right now, what's going on in the past, and what's going to be going on in the future. All right? I hope today's episode made sense. I know it was very long-winded and a little bit all over the place, and I know I just started with the, that expansion thing and just started ranting about a bunch of things, but hey, sometimes that's the way my show goes, all right? And I really do hope that you guys were able to learn something from this, that you guys appreciate today's episode, and again, most importantly, please add to the conversation below. You guys are amazing. I love, I love it when you guys are always interacting and asking questions and leaving comments and so on and so forth. And it, it, it allows all of us to continuously, you know, um, interact with each other and talk with each other. Speaking of which, if you guys want to interact on, more regular, on a more regular basis, join the Discord. The link is at the bottom, okay? Description of the video, you know, right at the top of the description. And uh, just click there, join us on Discord. And uh, again, we have a plethora of uh, information of subjects to talk about, of people in there talking about these subjects and so on and so forth. So please feel free to join the conversation. Okay? I implore you. All right? You're not alone. None of us are alone anymore. We're all growing and growing and growing and growing. Okay? Also, I want to give a big shout out to all my patrons out there. I want to give a shout out to everyone out there, you know, sending all kinds of love, you know, to me and Lambo in any shape or form, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, sponsorships, you know, whether it's, um, you know, thumbs ups, whether it's comments, it doesn't matter. It's all greatly appreciated and, and, I, and I love you guys for it. Every time you share the video, it just spreads the word on, on all this even more. Every time that you hit a like, it helps get this video more traction. Even if you give a dislike, it actually helps a lot as well. Um, even leaving comments, everything that you guys do literally helps. As Even though you might not think it does, it helps. And if you find this information helpful, if you, you know, want to help me grow, if you want to, you know, keep expanding the, the knowledge base, you know, to everyone around the world, then, you know, help me help you guys. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it. Long winded as usual. I got to get going. I got more videos to film. I got more things to do. I got family in town. I got a million things on my plate, but hey, this is life. What are you going to do? Enjoy it. That's all you're going to do. All right. Enjoy fucking life. Stay awesome. But more importantly than anything else, oh yeah, I already said it. Stay awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to please like, please subscribe, please share. And uh, more importantly than anything else, I know I've said it three times, but I'm going to say it again. 
stay awesome. I love you guys and uh, enjoy the rest of your day and week. Peace.